What's up, Bulls Nation? You found yourselves locked on Bulls. I'm Matt. That's Big Dave. Up ahead on today's episode, we're going to talk about this latest NBA trade deadline buzz column from Sham Sharanya for The Athletic. Interestingly, the Bulls absent throughout the entire column. No mention of the Bulls in the trade deadline buzz. We'll talk about what that might mean. And then on the back end of the episode, we'll take a look at this back-to-back slate of games the Bulls have in the middle of this week. First against the Pistons, and then Kyrie and the Nets. That's all next on a fresh Locked On Bulls. Let's go. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Here are your hosts, Matt Peck and Big Dave Watson. What's up and welcome to Locked On Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Matt Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. You can follow my co-host, Big Dave Watson, at BOW, B-A-W-L Sports. You can follow us at Locked On Bulls and hit us up on that text and voicemail line, 331-979-1369. Big Dave, before we get into Bulls stuff, quick shout out to you, sir, on, on a happy day. The Bears told Nagy and Pace to get in the van, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought about uh, tweeting out some vans, and, and then I said to myself, they don't even deserve vans. <laughs> I was like, they it, they don't. They don't deserve vans. I'm just I'm tired of it, Matt. I'm going to say this for real. This The way they handle this offseason will determine my Bears fandom going forward. It really, truly will. Like, honestly, and I mean that with all sincerity. Like, for real, man. It's on the line, Chicago Bears. My Bears fandom right. is on the line. It's on well, y'all, hey. man. But yes. If the Bulls can change things around and 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 make this much of a ch- successful change, then the Bears can do it too. It's true. Um, it's true. Obviously, huge news this week for the Bears. So check out our guy Lauren Cox with Locked On Bears for all of that great Bears coverage. Okay, yes. so Big Dave, uh, first topic of discussion today: interesting report from Sham Sharanya of the Athletic, who basically just gave a big. Where we are a month from today, NBA trade deadline. So we have a month mm-hmm. out. Before we've started to see a couple of small time trades, you know, obviously Rondo getting sent over to the Cavs who were dealing with the loss of Rubio for the season, with his injury. Mm-hmm. I think uh, the Nuggets sent Bull Bull away finally after just never, ever playing him, but no <laughs> yeah. really, really big trades yet. So Shams has updates on Ben Simmons, among many others, mm-hmm. um, lists teams that are reported to be interested in Simmons. It's a long list. The Hawks, the Kings, the Blazers, the Wolves, the Pacers. Um, No mention of the Bulls. Talks a little bit about the Celtics saying that they're not going to split up Tatum and Jalen Brown, but that maybe there could be a potential Simmons deal somewhere in there. Um, He talks about the Pistons and the Jeremy Grant situation. Lists several teams reported to be interested in Jeremy Grant in a trade. Wizards, Knicks, Blazers, Lakers, among others. No mention of the Bulls. He talks about John Wall update in uh, in Houston uh, and, and that whole ugly situation. He talks about the Pacers, a team that, of course, has been connected to the Bulls, at least from Bulls fans talking about Miles Turner in a potential trade because this team could really use some of that front court rim protection. He lists mm-hmm. teams that could be involved in a Turner trade. The Mavericks and Knicks are expressing interest. The Lakers and Hornets are expressing interest in Turner's. Mm-hmm. Um, he mentions the Cavs being interested in Karis LeVert because of their backcourt mm-hmm. short uh, uh, short mm-hmm. depth. I mean, he, he mentions all these teams, all these players, not a single mention of the Chicago Bulls. That I, It's kind of par for the course, isn't it? Like That's kind of how AK and uh, Mark Eversley have been operating. Uh, I think we did, guys, I think we should pay, pay attention to that part more so than anything, that they aren't being mentioned. Because I look at that, honestly, positively. That means, again, nothing is going out or coming in to, of the organization. And I think that's great. When we got Vooch, if you all remember, nobody was talking about it. <laughs> nobody had the Bulls doing anything. There was no speculation. There was nothing going on that was even being discussed or even being talked about, those guys uh, being shopped. And I don't think there was another team at that trade deadline who made more moves than the Chicago Bulls. Because they just made all the moves, man. Like, mm-hmm. it went from Booch, then with Troy Brown Jr., then Javante Green. 
Uh, it's one more Daniel play. Tice. I'm oh, Daniel Tice. Yes, then Daniel Tice. Like, I don't think anybody changed their team around more in that trade deadline than the Chicago Bulls, and they were not being discussed. They were not being talked about at all. So I like this. This is kind of par for the course, man. How do, how do you feel about not hearing the Bulls being mentioned? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, man. As soon as I saw it this morning, I said, the Bulls aren't in here at all, and that, I think, is a good thing. Because, look, that doesn't mean that I took that column – as you know, gospel to say the Bulls are not involved in trade talks a month away from the deadline right now. I took it to mean whether or not they are involved, nobody's hearing anything. Because the only time since AK and Eversley took over and started running this basketball organization that the leak got leaked, it was about who? A very prominent player named Lonzo Ball. And I think as you and I discussed, and we were discussing it while the NBA was going on with their tampering investigation and all of that, that leak, that didn't come from AK and Eversley. That didn't come from inside <laughs> the house. That came from Clutch Sports, who were super excited to announce, you know, the sign and trade of one of their big name clients to a big right. market franchise. But that's where that leak right. came from. And gee, exactly. do you think that maybe AK and or Eversley put in a call to Lonzo's people over there at Clutch and say, hey, guys. <laughs> Never, ever, ever do this again. <laughs> and meanwhile, everything else they've done, the Vooch trade came out of nowhere. The other sign of trade, Caruso. Remember how surprised we were when we were like, wait, we got Caruso? Like, well, DeMar DeRozan? DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> nothing. Sit, zilch, nada. There was no yeah. whisper about those other yeah. moves the Bulls made, which is a good thing. Because that past Bulls front office, they were airing their dirty laundry out all over the place. And it was always yeah. bad moves. Hey, everybody, yeah. look, look at this Look at this dumb move we're about to make. And then they would make it. I mean, for the love of God, this is much yeah. better. And maybe they are still taking calls, making calls. I would say right now, I, I would lean towards if anything, they are taking calls, not making them. But okay. even still, the fact that they're nowhere in this NBA trade deadline buzz update from a prominent NBA reporter, it doesn't mean they're not going to make a trade. It just means that as we have come to learn about them, they're playing everything very close to the chest. Yeah, and even with the Lonzo one, Matt, I think the reason that that wasn't such a uh, great secret being kept is because they tried to make the move previously, you know, during right. the trade deadline. They had already tried to make it. So, obviously, everybody was like, oh, yeah, well, we know who the Bulls are going after in the offseason. Yeah, because they already showed you. They played their hand. They, they told right. you what they wanted. But they didn't tell you anything else. You're right. That Caruso was like, what? And then DeRozan was really like, what? <laughs> it was Yeah. Those are two, like, out of nowhere joints because nobody saw it coming. So, this is par for the course, man. They When they say they're taking calls and when they say they've been on the phone, when Billy Donovan told you that they're been having, they've been having these talks and being on the phone, that's all I need to know, you know, is that they're trying to make these moves and continue to improve and better this basketball team. They don't have to do it out in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? That's not how they like it. Obviously, they're showing you that's not how they roll and that's not how they like it. So right. it just makes me feel good that, you know, that they're not even mentioned or even being talked about in there. But the fact that they have said they're on the phone and they're mm -hmm. talking to people about this stuff lets me know. That they're doing that thing again. I'm just going, you know, hey, again, letting them cook. <laughs> That's all I'm going to keep right. doing, baby. Let them cook. I, look, we, you know, I, I guess it is a big, you know, mark that we are a month away from the deadline. And, and, and you might think, okay, that means over the next four weeks, we got to really be paying attention to every possible little, you know, turn this rock over, turn that rock over, this rumor, that that report. You know, don't don't be surprised if you really don't hear much over the over the coming weeks about the Bulls and what they might do. But then when you get to not just, OK, we're, we're a month away from the deadline. We were a week away. We are hours away. Maybe we'll he, we'll see some, you know, trade sprung on us from AK and Eversley that they managed to keep quiet this whole time. But even if they don't do that, I right now would probably put myself in the camp of, of fans who would be OK with them addressing buying uh, or bolstering this front court on the buyout market. I like yeah. I, I know that some Bulls fans are are thinking they need to make one more really big move to go all in because we see a potential championship run window this season with Zach and DeMar playing at the level that they are. And and, and I don't yeah. think that that's completely, you know, out of bounds. I think that that's a logical uh -huh. take to have, but mm -hmm. 
at the same time, we see Kobe White playing well. We we hear that Patrick Williams might be a little bit ahead of schedule coming back from his injury, and then you you know then you fall back into that conversation of, all right, well if the Bulls really want to make a swing at a player like Jeremy Grant or someone of that level, you're talking about giving up both guys or at least one of those two, and do you want to do that? Mm-hmm. That that's what it is for Bulls fans right now. Yeah, and they've shown they don't want to do that with Patrick Williams at all. Uh, again, must state he will not be traded. <laughs> he will not be put in this. The fact that Billy Donovan has said, um, even even when uh, Young Goat Rob Schaefer brought that news out, talking about the cast and how his cast has changed, the very next part of that article, it stated that Billy Donovan is, has given him tons of things to watch and tons mm-hmm. of work as far as, you know, um, as far as game tape, you know, and things like that, as far as scheme is concerned. So he's he's expanding his mind at the same time, Matt. And that's what makes me excited because – and real man, I just real quickly want to touch this real quickly. The two things I like most about what I'm hearing about Patrick Williams, one, as far as the injury, it's nothing that is stopping him or hindering him from continuing to shoot the basketball or do anything like that because it's his offhand. He can still mm-hmm. do his conditioning. He can still do his work and still do those things like that. The other right. thing I like is what I just said, that Billy Donovan is in the workroom with him, giving him game tape, and he's learning the game that way also. I love the fact he's still being a sponge and that he can still – uh, have his conditioning also. Yeah, and, and despite the fact that he's been on the shelf this long, he, he's traveling with the team. He is going to not only their yeah. home games, but their away games. He is in and around this team learning and absorbing, and we, we could be looking at a you know a return from Patrick Williams maybe mm-hmm. even before the regular season is over. Uh, so, you know, keep an eye out on that as we are in this final month window of potential Bulls trades because he and Kobe are the two big pieces that they might dangle mm-hmm. If they want to make a big swing, uh, big Dave, like they're never, they're never trade feet up. They're never, they're not doing it. I, you know what? Not this year. <laughs> yeah. I hope you're right. Uh, all right. So we, we got to talk about this upcoming um, matchup against the Detroit Pistons, who the Bulls played twice yeah. right at the onset this season. Before we do that, though, big Dave, tell the folks how to have some fun with the football and the basketball and all of the money that you can make while you're watching sports. Oh, first of all, let me just wish you guys a happy new betting year. And I know you want to do that. You know why? Because guess what today is? Today is Monday, okay? And you know what's happening today? The national championship is going down today. You know what else is going down this weekend? The NFL playoff football season is going down this weekend, y'all. So you know what that means. You got to go to bet online as they continue to march towards those playoffs and beyond. And why? Because they remain your number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. It's a new year, a new updated desktop and mobile website. So you can sign up today, get that 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use that promo code locked on. That's locked on. That's the promo code. Use that to get started. Playoff football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC fighting, whatever you like. All right. Don't wait. Take advantage of all these amazing offers available to you and yours in this 2022 season. Bet online is your fastest. Bet online is your easiest way to wager all you got and all that you want on your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. Mm-hmm. Sports. <laughs> All right, moving on. Bulls uh, have a makeup game uh, that is one of their newly added sets of back-to-backs this season because of their postponements in the month of December for COVID-shortened rosters. Um, The Bulls played the Pistons two of their first three regular season games, uh, part of that Bulls 4-0 start. They won both. And in both games, the Bulls held the Pistons to under 90 points. I think they they had 88 in one game and 82 in another. And despite the fact that the Bulls were still working out some of their their offensive kinks, I think the Bulls were shy of 100 points in each of those two victories. Um, Mm -hmm. Things are essentially the same uh, other than the Bulls had Patrick Williams and the Bulls had Alex Caruso in those wins over the Pistons. Other than that, this Pistons team is the same bad team that they were then. However, Big Dave, in the month of January so far, the Pistons are three and two, and that includes a pretty impressive win over the Milwaukee Bucks just a few days ago. 
They've got guys on this team, whether it be Hamadou Diallo, Sadiq Bey, both of those guys have had 30-point games in this last stretch of games where they've been playing a little bit better. This mm-hmm. isn't a rollover game, and especially after playing poorly against Dallas, the Bulls can't take the Pistons lightly just because it's the first of a back-to-back and you got you know Brooklyn a little, a little ways down the road. Yeah, and I, I don't think they will, especially coming off the loss that they had uh, against the Mavs. Um, you know, it's kind of kind of time to regroup and, you know, like you said, get things right uh, against the Pistons. So I don't think they'll be overlooking them at all. And plus, the Pistons have played them tough. I remember that game early on in the season, Matt. That was a really tough game for the Pistons. That Pistons probably should have won. Um, they, they really played them really tough and played them really well. And even in that second game that they played, even though that was more of a blowout of a beatdown that was, mm-hmm. um, you know, usually Jeremy Grant and those guys, they usually play very well <laughs> against the Chicago Bulls, man. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to take them lightly at all. And, you know, it's still, you know, in your in your division. You know what I'm saying? It's still a division game. So that still kind of means something as well when you're seeing a team for the third time and you're going up against them. I'm sure they don't want to lose. You know what I mean? And I know the Bulls want to get start this brand new winning streak. So, yeah. I don't think they'll be overlooking them, Matt. I think they'll be definitely focused in on getting right uh, against these Pistons, man, and hopefully they can do that. So, you know, that um, I guess that's that's one thing in the Bulls' favor is, is that Jeremy Grant still rehabbing that injury right now, what is a, a UCL, I think. Um, mm-hmm. And in the meantime, they've had to have other guys step up, like uh, Trey Lyles. He's been playing pretty well for them. Uh, he's had some big games, even kind of uh, coming in and out of the starting lineup every once in a while. Mm-hmm. You also got Kay Cunningham, who has had kind of an up and down rookie year. He's missed some time here and there, um, but but he's shown not only um, you know the scoring. He's actually not shooting all that. I think he's shooting like under forty percent from the field uh, so far this rookie season. But his playmaking ability, I would say, is uh, is is pretty. Is pretty impressive thus far. Um, but, you know, other than that, I, you know, they got Josh Jackson who can have a big game off the bench, but there, I, there's really not a lot there. Um, Isaiah Stewart is a decent, uh, you know, is a decent big man. He's had some good games for them this season. Probably most memorably went charging after LeBron, after LeBron <laughs> cut him above the eye. That was pretty epic. But, yeah, I mean, when, when I was going through and looking at Detroit's numbers this season, um, not surprisingly, as a team that's 8 and 30, they are in the bottom or near the bottom in a lot of statistical categories. They have the second worst field goal percentage of any team in the NBA. Uh, they are a similarly poor three point shooting team, but there are two categories where the Pistons are a top 10 team. And that, I think, will be the areas where if the Bulls can control these elements of the game, it should be an easy win. They are top 10 in free throw attempts per game. And they are top 10 in steals on the defensive end. So Mm -hmm. guess what? If the Bulls limit bad fouls, and we saw them kind of get into some foul trouble against Dallas on Sunday night, if you don't give the Pistons easy points at the free throw line, and you don't Mm -hmm. give Pistons easy points by turning the ball over and letting them get out and transition and get fast break points, I mean, there's there's a simple W for you right there. Just control those two elements of the game. Yeah, and also uh, Vooch is going to be someone we're all looking at as, as well, right? Uh, especially coming off the game that he had uh, against Ooh. the Mavericks. Stinky. You want to see him. Yeah, stinky, stinky. he you. He <laughs> you. <laughs> all right. You kind of want to see him get right uh, and get more comfortable and acclimated again uh, with when they play against Detroit. And also what I want to look at, Matt, is DeMar De- I'm not saying nothing wrong with DeMar DeRozan because it's not. Uh, I want to look at his free throw shooting because he's been missing more free throws than I'm used to uh lately so i'd like to keep an eye on that it's been weird yeah what you saw him like you saw him after the game taking 250 free throws still in right. his uniform, uh, the win way. against the magic last week <laughs> yeah, where the Bulls yeah, pulled out yeah. a close one and he missed right. some late in the game yeah yeah and he, his family was there and he was like hey y'all gotta hold up i gotta shoot these free throws man y'all gotta wait a minute you know what i'm saying i love that about him by the way so yeah i i want to see that also i want to get i want him to get that part of his thing right and also, I don't want to see Zach falling more into the complaining and yelling at the refs where it's hindering uh, his his effort on defense and getting back like that. I'm not talking about him complaining, being upset and all that. That's fine. I don't care. Yell at him all day. But, you know, when you're not getting back on defense because of it, then it becomes the actual issue and things like that. So those are the three kind of things uh, I'm looking at, man. So, and yeah, just hopefully Kobe continues to do what he's doing. Io continues to uh, do what he's doing. 
And all this means is just we continue to get a day closer to the return of uh, Javante Green and uh, Alex Caruso, because I'm telling you, they missed them both, man. I hope Bulls fans realizing what Javante Green means to this Ooh. team, man. He is important, okay. dog. So, yeah. Um, yeah, speaking of Caruso, God, I, I want him to magically be cleared in time for that Brooklyn oh, game. So bad, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to the Brooklyn game in a minute, oh. but man, I want Caruso back for that Brooklyn game. Man. Um, you, you mentioned this this recent uncharacteristic downturn for Le, for DeMar at the free throw line. That is one area where, yes, the Pistons are good at getting to the free throw line, uh, you know, top 10 in the NBA. They, they are the team, they are the team that commits the second most fouls in the NBA themselves, 20.7. Foul, personal fouls committed yeah. per game. Only the Minnesota Timberwolves commit more fouls. So that is an area where if the Bulls can limit their bad fouls and attack and attack and attack and get to the free throw line, the Pistons are a team that will foul you and put you at the free throw line. That's an easy way for DeMar, for Zach to control this game. Get to the free throw line. Because the Bulls, like neither team, B B Bulls or Mavs, shot a whole lot of free throws on Sunday night. I think the Bulls even had a slight edge. But, you know, this Bulls team, we've seen them be able to get to the free throw line 20 plus times a game a lot this season because of DeMar and his ISO play, because Zach's starting to get more calls. But they, you know, they, they did not do that very well against Dallas. Um, the Bulls as a team are shooting 20.8 free throw attempts per game, which is really just kind of middle of the pack. You would like mm -hmm. to see them get to the free throw line a lot uh, to maybe create some distance against this weak Detroit team on, on Tuesday night. Yeah. Yeah. Detroit's going to have some weakness, man. Okay. Now we go to Brooklyn, the juicier oh, yeah. game in this back to back Ooh. for Tuesday and Wednesday <laughs> got flexed into a, Second of doubleheader ESPN game. Mm -hmm. So we got a nine o'clock tip Chicago time. Mm -hmm. And it's on the second night of a back to back. Uh, and there's this there's this little wrinkle in this matchup compared to the Bulls first two games against mm -hmm. Brooklyn. That wrinkle's name is Kyrie Irving, Big Dave. Uh, the uh, big three. The big three that Brooklyn originally planned to build its team with and around. The yeah. Bulls are finally going to get their shot at the Brooklyn big three on Wednesday night. It's a matchup I've been wanting to see. It's a matchup I've been dying to see. I know they don't have all their horses, uh, but still the Bulls have those players available that you want out there, you know what I'm saying, to perform. But, man, Matt, this is a game. Like, this is the top two teams in the East. This is just what it is. And – Oh, record-wise, I'm saying. Like, this mm -hmm. is what it is. So, I mean, K KD, you already know there's no answer for this. Uh, James Harden, who's been playing much, much better uh, as of late, he really has figured out uh, what when the NBA kind of changed their rules as far as fouls are concerned. He's figured out how to score. And was like, oh, yeah, I can actually score. I forgot. <laughs> I'm actually good at that. So, yeah, let me keep doing that. Oh, yeah, I can pass the ball too, guys. Did you guys know that? I can, I can pass the ball. And so here's that too. But then you add Kyrie Irving, man. Oh, what an absolute issue. I cannot wait to watch the matchup of Kyrie Irving and Ayo DeSumo. That's the matchup I want to see. It's not, it's not him and Lonzo that I want to see. I know Lonzo, you know, I'm not worried about Lonzo. Lonzo's great. You know what I'm saying? As far as unball defending and things like that. I already know what he can provide and bring to this. It's Ayo that I want to see him up against because Ayo has been absolutely annoying against elite point guards. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not just talking about good ones. I'm talking elite ones. You saw it with Luka. Like, he was annoying <laughs> to Luka Doncic, man. He messed his whole game up. You saw him do it to Trey Young. He was absolutely annoying to Trey Young, all right? I can't wait to see what this looks like against the guy who, who probably has the best handles in the league in mm -hmm. Kyrie Irving, man, who uses his size, you know what I'm saying, better than anybody I know who doesn't have a lot of size. Right. Um, he doesn't shy away from contact. He actually kind of tries to draw it once he gets to the bucket. So I'm really interested to see that matchup because win or lose, Ayo is gonna. This is gonna be a wealth of knowledge he obtains from guarding a guy like Kyrie Irving, man, and and going up that kind of elite kind of point guard. So I'm I'm very interested in watching that matchup. Yeah, I mean, I think that's obviously the biggest question coming into this Bulls Nets game compared to the first two when. 
the Bulls won the first one in a blowout. Like they won by like 23, right? And and that was a game where they they didn't have a Kyrie, but they had KD and Harden. I think KD had a monster game. He had like 38. Harden had a quiet night, four of eleven. Yeah. You know, not yeah. not not a big factor. And then the next game between these two teams was a lot closer. Demar and Zach combined for 60. And, you know, that was a little bit better than KD and Harden combining for, you know, for, uh, 40, 42. So what now that you add Kyrie in does it do to the Bulls' plan defensively? Who guards who? Yeah. Because it's yeah. Yeah. it's a, it's enough of a, you know, of a, oh, dear God, what do we do when you're trying to guard Kevin Durant and James Harden on the floor at the same time? Ooh. But now, and then that's the other interesting thing. And we only have one game so far with Kyrie. He has played just one game. I think he had like 20-some points, decent night. But how do Steve Nash and his staff stagger the minutes of three of them now? Because, you know, when I've looked at the splits of Brooklyn with KD and Harden on the floor together or just one or the other on the floor together, it's it's a little surprising in ways that, like, the numbers aren't as far apart as you would you would think when their numbers aren't the like by far best when both of them are on the floor at the same time. A lot of nights they yeah, play better yeah. when they're staggering Harden and, and and KD because there's a clear number one guy that they're running their offense through. Now you throw Kyrie into that mix, and if you're Billy Donovan, who do you put on who? And do you adapt and change that throughout the game based on what Steve Nash is doing with his rotation? There are a lot mm. of c- capable defensive players and defensive guards that that Billy Donovan has to work with right now but one that as far as we know right now will not be there to help out Alex Caruso so yeah, yeah who does Lonzo spend most of his night guarding as you said when Io comes in for his bench minutes who is he guarding who, do, who you know who do Levine and DeMar match up with it's mm-hmm. oh, man it's going to be tough it's going to be tough to 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 try to what do you do? What do you do with this big three, Dave? I don't know. <laughs> That's right. Don't know what to do with your hands. I, I understand. You don't know what to do with them. Um, and even on top of that, that big three, Matt, another guy that they have to worry about who's been playing great is LaMarcus Aldridge. Had he's big games against that, the Bulls in the first two games between these two teams. Big games. Yeah, he's actually, you know, getting all-star votes, you know what I'm saying, as far as the fans is concerned uh, in the East. He's been playing very, very well, man. So that's another, and you know the Bulls' issues with size. We got, that's been well documented. So that's going to be another interesting matchup because his matchup, um, more so than Vooch, uh, and it's funny how I'm looking at the bench more in these matchups, but I'm looking at guys like um, uh, Tyler Cook and Tony Bradley. Like, I'm looking at those guys because that's who is going to be in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? When the rotations get shorter, but your size is going to have to get bigger when you're playing against these guys, when him, uh, Millsap, uh uh what's my man name uh Blake Griffin when you when you're playing against those kind of guys you're going to be looking at Tyler Cook you're going to be looking at Tony Bradley uh to provide that interior defense or just being there or just you know using all six of their fouls however they want to do it you, that's going to be necessary because he's going to be open man and when you leave a Marcus Aldridge is open for them jumpers like it's it's water you know what I'm saying I don't care how old you are you don't lose a wide open jump shot you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just what it is. He'd be 70 years old, bro. You leave him open, he's going to kill you. He's going to go 10 for 10. It's just what it is. So that's going to be an interesting matchup uh, that I watch in that game, man. And I'm, it's so cool, honestly. Like, it's it's worrisome because they're good, but I like it because it's worrisome. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, because now I'm not worried about, you know, regular season matchup. I'm thinking playoffs. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man, we run into the Nets. This is a good matchup to find out, you know, where you stand with them and what they can provide, things like that. We've already beaten them twice. So, you know, they're coming in, you know, with that on their shoulder as well, um, coming in more fully healthy than the Bulls were, than the Bulls are, you know what I'm saying, with Caruso and Javante being out. So, man, it's 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 going to be good. It's worrisome because they're good, but this is good. This is a good worry that I like because that means the Bulls are good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I like that. I like that. I really do. Um, I, just kind of looking at the Nets' last couple of games, um, LaMarcus Aldridge did not play uh, in their overtime win against the Spurs the other day Ooh. because of a foot Ooh. injury. He did play in the Uh-oh. game prior to that, which was their win okay. over the Milwaukee Bucks. So um, he was listed as questionable and then a late scratch for that win against the Spurs. So 
We'll okay. see. We're recording this here on Monday yeah. afternoon. This is our Tuesday episode. Um, we might get you know some update that maybe the Bulls don't have to deal with LaMarcus Aldridge on Wednesday, which would certainly make, make sure. things easier <laughs> for them. But, yeah. you know, obviously it's still just, you know, the, the second week of January. When you talk about games with larger implications or, or measuring stick games, you don't want to put too much meaning behind a single regular season game in the middle of January, Big Dave. But mm-hmm. just thinking a little bit more big picture, like if, if the Bulls get this win to be 3-0 and against the Brooklyn Nets, you're not only talking about, you know, stretching that cushion out a little bit, keeping Brooklyn at bay while the Bulls are trying to hold on to this top seed in the East, but yeah. does it give your team anything to say, okay, we beat them twice, when they had, you know, KD and Harden out there, now we know we can also beat them with their big three, with Kyrie Irving added to the mix. Or, or do you say it's one game? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. That's a good question. Um, because like we 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 played the first two games, those victories. I wouldn't say you got ahead of yourself, but it felt good. Oh, it meant something to Bulls fans are. that you, you beat that Brooklyn right. team. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it felt good because it, not only. The fact you won, but in the fashion that you won, you know, with that three point shot, especially that second game where Lonzo hit that three point shot mm-hmm. and they did it in Brooklyn, it, it kind of was a signal for us that, or at least for some other people more so, like, man, the Bulls are pretty good, you know, like, man, they, they beating the Nets again, like this, this, you gotta watch this team, you gotta look at them. So you're gonna get their best shot and you're gonna be on national television getting their best shot. So yeah, Matt, like, it's, yeah, I think you have to put something on this game, honestly. Uh, I try not to put a lot on regular season games, but I think you got to right. put something on this one. You know what I mean? It means something to these cats. You know what I'm saying? It means especially the Nets, but also the Bulls. Look, you got DeMar DeRozan getting MVP consideration. You got Zach Levine, who thinks he should definitely they should have three All-Stars because of the way that they played, and he's also getting Dark Horse MVP talk and things like that. You got Vucci, who has been uh, inconsistent, especially in the last game, but who during that nine-game stretch was just dominating cats with his consistency. You know he wants to play well. You got Lonzo. You know he wants to play well out there. Io, who's not scared of any big moment. Kobe White, who has finally figured out where he needs to be and how to score and, and come in and provide uh, that kind of spark that this team needs. They want to win this game as well. Like, this is an important game. And then there's another game after that that we will get into uh, later on in the week that's might be even bigger, you know what I'm saying, than, than this one. So this this is a very important game as far as regular season is concerned, and you want the Bulls to come out and just give a good showing. Yeah. Um, r- regardless of, of how you out there at Bulls Nation might feel about whether or not this Bulls-Nets game means anything other than just one win or one loss, you, you mentioned the fact that it's going to be a nationally televised game on ESPN. Um, that That it will be made – to be something by national yeah. broadcasters, by national media, yeah. pregame yeah. coverage, you know, ESPN, NBA countdown before the first of these two double headers. They're going to talk about what Bulls Nets means. They're going to talk about this being the first time these teams have met with Kyrie Irving returning to the team and playing in road games. They're going to talk about the top of the Eastern Conference standings and whether or not the Bulls are an actual legitimate threat because mm-hmm. most people probably still have Brooklyn and Milwaukee ahead of the Bulls right now in their rankings of not who's in who's in front in the Eastern Conference regular season standings, but who's coming out of the East. If you ask yeah. most people who's coming out of the East, the Bulls are probably behind Milwaukee and Brooklyn still. So because of that, people are going to make a lot of this game. Um, make of it what you will. I'm just excited to see it because, Dave, we get to watch a primetime game with so Bulls <laughs> and, and and a New York team, another big market team, and, and and there's a game and a half separating them for the top seed in the East. I mean, so crazy. <laughs> we it's been a long time since we've been <laughs> able to get amped up for games like that. Yeah, man. Like it, remember back those older games when the Bulls would play the Heat and how those regular season games. Oh meant my something. god! Or even further back than that, Dude, Bulls it was like. Games. It was, you know, like unplug your phone. Yeah, that was like back yeah. in the day. People had like phones in their yes. apartments. <laughs> Take the phone off the hook. Yeah. You know, close the block. No, nobody bug me. It's Bulls Heat on primetime tonight. Leave me the hell alone. Yeah. Yeah, glued to your yeah. television. Bulls Nets oh. on Wednesday will be glued to your television stuff. And that's just awesome yes. that we have that back. 
It really is, man. It's a great feeling. And Bulls fans, we should be excited that we got this feeling back. And let's hold on to it, man. Let's hold on to it, baby. Come on. First things first, let's go ahead and beat the Pistons by 25. Yes. Ideally, yes. ideally, we get Zach and Tamar some significant rest in the fourth quarter of that one because yes. it's already Looking over after that. three, and we yeah. can get ourselves uh, geared up here for Bulls Nets on Wednesday. Man, can't wait. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, wait. hit us up on Twitter all day, every day. I'm at Bulls underscore Peck. Dave's at Bow, B-A-W-L Sports. We are at Locked on ah. Bulls. And that text and voicemail line is always there for you as well. 331-979-1369. Until tomorrow, Bulls Nation, see Red be good. Peace out.